In this video, I'm going to review what we covered in the classroom on how to use a polar chart when you're doing a balance on a dynamic component on your helicopter. And typically, this dynamic balancing is going to be done on main rotors and tail rotors, but you may be doing this on drive shafts and you may be doing this on cooling fans in a different aircraft. So the polar chart, the clock angle, is represented by these numbers 1 through 12 here that just looks like the face of a clock. We have 12, 1, 2, 3, and so on, all the way to 12 o'clock. Okay? And then their inches per second is represented by these concentric rings that work their way inward from the clock angle. And the reason why this is called a polar chart is if you were to look at a globe and look at the top of the globe, you'd see we have all these different rings of latitude and longitude. Okay, So you can think of the polar chart as latitude and longitude. The clock angle or times on the clock represent the longitude and then the inches per second represent the latitude. Now, each helicopter model, whether it be an R-22, a Bell 206, an S-76, each helicopter is going to have one of these polar charts that is specific to the component you're going to be balancing. So if we were balancing the main rotor for this same R-22, we would have a polar chart pertaining to the main rotor. So the first thing to do is to ensure you have the right chart for the right component for the right aircraft. And typically you'll find these charts in the maintenance manual for the helicopter you're working on. Now there's two pieces of information you're going to need to get from your track and balance equipment, your electronic balancer. Um, it doesn't matter which one you're using, the 8500, the, the Vibrex 2000, the 177. You need two pieces of information. So you need a clock angle, okay? So you're going to need your clock angle. And you're going to need an IPS reading. And IPS just stands for inches per second, and it's a measure of the vibration in the component. Now, typically, these balance charts will also have a section for you to track what you're doing in regards to your adjustments. You can see here we've got a spot to record our runs that we do, to record the clock angle that we get from the balancer, to record the inches per second, and to record the changes we've made. Now this is helpful to ensure that if we made a mistake, we can always go back and it helps us kind of do an analysis or see a trend of what's going on as we're doing the balancing. Okay, so the balance gear is going to give us some information specifically in the form of clock angle and IPS. So we do our first run. We record that as run number one. And let's just say that it gave us a clock angle of three o'clock. Okay, so we read our clock angle here and we had an inches per second of 0.5. Okay, so if we look on the chart, we have two spots to add weights. We can add weights to adjust our cordwise balance, and we can add or remove weights to adjust our spanwise balance. Now, there's a bit of confusion on which one to pick first. So, if you look at the direction that these lines are where you can add or remove weight, Typically, if you add or remove weight along this line here, the dot is going to move in this direction. Or if you add weight spanwise, the dot's going to move in this direction. And what I mean by the dot moving is if we were to take our 3 o'clock that we got from our last adjustment, okay, and we find the point 0.5 here, and we put a little indication there. So there's where our reading is. If we want to move this dot, or if we want to vector this to the center here, that's the goal, that's in perfect balance, we need to make an adjustment. Now, if we make an adjustment here, okay, the dot's gonna move vertically. If we make the adjustment here, 
the dot's going to kind of move on this slight angle, not quite 45 degrees. Looking at where we have our dot, and we know we want to move it to the center, that's kind of the goal. Okay, so let's go back. Let's use our red pen again here and let's see if the zoom will stay where we want it. So we had 3 o'clock, 0.5. So 3 o'clock, 0.5. Now, if we want to move this towards the center, the best choice looking here is cordwise balance. If you look on the spanwise, if we were to draw a line from this dot to each corresponding adjustment bar for cord and span, okay? If we look here for spanwise adjustment, we're almost on the zero. But if we go up here for cordwise adjustment, we can add two AN960 416L washers to the blank blade. Now, which blade is the blank blade? Well, the target blade is going to be the one that had the reflective sticker on it that you use to get the clock angle, and the blank blade is the opposite. Now, for cord-wise balance, we're typically going to be adding weights to where the pitch links attach. Okay, And for span-wise balance, we would be adding weights typically to tip pockets or some sort of attachment on the tip of the blade to add the weights to it. So looking at this chart, our best choice is to add two AN960416 washers. So two to blank. So now let's do another run. Okay, and if we do another run and we find on run two, okay, our clock angle is 12 o'clock. and we look at the electronic balancer, and we find that our inches per second is 0.2. So it definitely got better. We started with 0.5, and now we've gotten the vibration down to 0.2, but we're still not quite where we want to be, so we need to do another adjustment. So we take our chart, and we find 12 o'clock up here, and we run it till we find the 0.2 and now if we look if we draw those two lines again okay and I'm just going to use a different color this time if we draw those two lines again so we put one here we'll draw it to the spanwise spot and we'll put another one here and we'll draw it to the cordwise spot now remember the goal is to get that dot as close to the center here as we possibly can. Remember, if we're in the center, we're pretty much in perfect balance, or as close to it as we can get. So we've got two choices. Now, looking where our dot is and knowing that the dot will move in the direction, in this direction, if we pick spanwise balance, and the dot will move in this direction. If we pick cordwise balance, it looks like our best course of action is going to be a spanwise adjustment. Okay? So if we follow our line here, we can see we have add to blank and 968 out washers. And you can also if you if you look at this chart, on one side we've got add to target, the other side we have add to blank. Well, if you have no washers on the blank and you notice you've got washers on the target, you can remove washers from the target. So we'll just assume in our tail rotor assembly we started, it had no balancing washers installed on it. So add to blank, an AN960 8 out washer. Now we're right between the zero and the one, and we can't really add a half washer. Well, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I have shaved them down. So we're going to add one washer to blank. Okay, so if we go here, we're going to go one washer to blank. 
and I'm going to specify if it's quarter span. Okay, and that should read span, not chord. Our last adjustment was chord. Okay, so we've done our adjustment, and we're going to do another run. And we do another run, and we find on run three, record our run, so at run three, our inches per second and clock angle. Our clock angle is 11 clock and our inches per second goes down to 0 0.05, okay? So if we plot it out, we see 11 o'clock here. We run it down. Now the first ring here is two. So 0 0.05 is, is pretty close, gonna be pretty close to the center. Now what will happen is as you get closer to having your tail rotor or main rotor in balance, the closer into balance it is, the more difficult it's going to be for the electronic balancer to give you a clock angle. So if you find you, know, you get down to 0.5 and the manual says the limit is 0 0.05, right? That's good. You can stop, but if you're still getting a clock angle, you can typically keep going and keep doing an adjustment. And I always try and, you know, depending on how many runs you, you've done, because every time you start the helicopter, you know, it's fuel, it's pilot, you got to pay a pilot, and they're not cheap. And then more importantly, it's wear and tear on the components. You know, you're burning times off the components when you're running the helicopter. So if we find that, you know, hey, we're at 11 o'clock at 0.5 and we got a clock angle, we could go ahead and do another adjustment, but we look in the manual and we find that um, the limit of 0.5 is good. We're done. Okay, so that's basically how to use a polar chart. And this chart works the same way whether you're balancing the the Whirly Gig, which is the helicopter simulator in the classroom, or an R22, or a CH54 or a 64 Skycrane. So that's just a quick overview of how to use one of these balance charts that are commonly referred to as polar charts and how to take the information that you're getting from your electronic balancer equipment and what adjustments to do and how the adjustments affect what's going to happen with that inches per second reading and the clock angle. All right, I hope this helped with a bit of review. Thanks.